Hello and welcome to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. I am your host, Kathleen McGivern, and today I'm going to talk pop art. One of my favorite art movements is pop art, and I love it. I love the artists. I love what came out of it. As well, I think teaching art lessons that are inspired by the pop art movement is a great way to engage the learners in your classroom. Kids really connect with pop art, and it can be an invitation for them to bring their ideas and the things they love to your classroom. It can be a way to allow more student choice and student-centered learning. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Now, before I talk about today's episode theme, I just want to let you know that my membership, the Artastic Collective, will be opening for enrollment in exactly one month. So starting August 1st, 2021, you'll be able to enroll in the Artastic Collective for the year so that you're ready to teach for the entire year. In the membership, you will get a library of art resources where the resources are released in big bundles each month for two years. This is a year-to-year art resource library where you will get art lessons for things such as the holidays and seasons, artists and art history, a variety of themes, ceramics, sketchbooks, and more. And yeah, you get to retain access to them as long as you have your subscription. In addition to receiving my Ms. Artastic art lessons, you will also get access to my exclusive art teacher course called The Classroom, which is a year-long course that will help you with everything from classroom management, fast finishers in your classroom, assessment strategies, building your confidence, art critiques, back to school, and more. As well, you will get access to my exclusive video series called Draw with Ms. Artastic, which is like my YouTube channel, but with videos that are exclusive to members, have no ads, and are art related. And like my YouTube channel, you can use any mediums to draw with them for flexible activities. You will also get ex- get access to the exclusive Journey of Success, which are my monthly art teacher challenges, and to the exclusive members only community forum where you can chat, ask questions, and collaborate with other members. So make sure you head on over to www.artasticcollective.com or you can Google Artastic Collective and it will come up there as well. And make sure you get on that waitlist to ensure you are notified when the membership opens. And make sure that you bookmark the website. If you are not, if you're wanting to check out the quality of my art resources prior to registration, I have three full art project examples, which you can find at the Artastic Collective. Hit the free button at the top to find the three art projects that are at a range of different levels for you to sample. Yes, they're completely free, and yes, they are full tutorials, so you can definitely use them during back to school. So why choose the Artastic Collective? Well, with your subscription, you can be assured that you won't have to search endlessly for ideas or create lesson plans anymore. These are resources that you need now. Plan quickly, teach confidently, and encourage creativity in your classroom with art lessons that kids love. Now, on to the episode. So before we begin, let's understand what the pop art movement is. In the, it emerged in the mid 20th century in the United Kingdom and the United States of America simultaneously. The main agenda of this pop art movement was to solidify the idea that art can be drawn from any source or any day-to-day object from our surroundings. In this movement, artists incorporated all common objects like lipstick, burgers, soup cans, and more into their artwork and created masterpieces. This movement began in the early 1950s, and it consisted of painters, sculptors, critics, and writers. Then by the 1950s, it reached the United States and spread rapidly. It is commonly said that most of the roots of this movement lie in the cultural revolution that was led by thinkers, activists, and artists of that time. It started spreading quickly, and many people believed that Richard Hamilton, a pop pioneer's collage that was shown in the White Chapel Gallery in London was the official beginning of the movement. After the movement started, it quickly started influencing fine art and its culture and is still doing it. 
Hamilton describes the pop art movement by saying, Pop art is popular, transient, expendable, low-cost, mass-produced, young, witty, sexy, gimmicky, glamorous, and big business. Characteristics of the pop art movement. Um, well, pop art was famous because of its vibrancy and attraction, but some of the other reasons that pop art was famous was that it utilized the objects that were commonly known commercially, like road signs, soup cans, and pictures of celebrities and even brand names and logos. It often used vibrant colors, especially the primaries, so red, yellow, and blue. Irony and satire was huge in pop art, and that's also something that I like to incorporate into my own lowbrow artworks. So humor was the essential component of pop art as, you just, as artists used it to challenge the status quo and made statements about current events. And pop artists also use innovative techniques like silk screening and printing, and they used to produce a large amount of images. As well, pop artists were also tending to explore and experiment with mixed media which was something really cool at the time so some prominent figures of the movement one of course is andy warhol and his name is pretty much famous and associated with the american pop art movement his works represent so many aspects of the pop art movement like obsessions with celebrities repetition of images and the use of advertising as subject matter his most prominent works include campbell's soup cans and death and disaster he collaborated also with artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat and brands like Perrier. He ultimately opened a studio <laughs> with the name The Factory that was so cool that served uh, for his workshop for art making and was basically like a mass hangout place for everybody at the time, <laughs> as well as so many other things that went on there. <laughs> So cool. Anyway, Roy Lichtenstein is another prominent artist of the pop art movement, and he is famous for his bold outlines and vibrant colors. He used comic books as his reference for source material, and he used Bende dots to stimulate comic style later on in his sculptures and paintings. He also took his subject matter from print media, like so many art other artists at the time. So now we're going to dive in on my five art lesson ideas for our pop art lessons for kids. So first is my idea is an Andy Warhol repeated image. So my first idea is that you could have students create an artwork that plays with the idea of repeated images. Now, depending on the age of the students, you could do this with a variety in a variety of ways. So Andy Warhol was pretty big on repeating some of his prints in different ways. The fancier ones even featured like special silver or gold ink or paint. And I think that students can make the same art piece a few times, like smaller explorations. They don't have to be huge right you could do small explorations multiple times or they could divide the paper up that they're using into four quadrants and repeat the image in each smaller quadrant on the paper so with each time they do it the image will be slightly different and they can use it as an opportunity to explore different colors or color schemes students can also use black wax crayon or oil pastel and can draw an image in each corner of their paper and then they can paint with watercolor over top to create like a colorful background and with older kids you can even explore printmaking with elementary students you could do cardboard cutouts to make a type of stamp for block printing on a budget or you can do full printmaking exploration with your middle or high school students focusing on the style of Andy Warhol. They could be inspired by topics that he did but make it contemporary. Perhaps they explore icons or people they're interested in right of like their time versus exploring individuals Warhol explored which would not really maybe have a connection for your kids. So if you have a pre-K or kindergarten students, you could definitely photocopy an image of something simple that they like. Maybe photocopy like five things that are popular amongst your students. Like you could have like a little poll. Then they can explore coloring in the white spaces that are left. Like we're not making coloring sheets like photocopy like a packaging or something or like a picture of something. So they can fill in the remaining white spaces with either tempura pancakes or watercolor paints or whatever um this way they're not just coloring but it's exploring the basics of like wax resist painting and it should be a good idea if you need a quick lesson or if you're in between units and you want to teach about pop art but then just have like a quick little activity after so it's a great way to engage your littles and teach to their interests so like maybe you have like a i don't know what's popular right now like 
what are those <laughs> furry animals that like are <laughs> animatronics <laughs> that like walks a lot or something i don't know i don't know what's i don't have i don't have kids right now so i'm like totally out of <laughs> hot wheels are those cool still i don't know anyway you get what i'm saying <laughs> okay So the next four ideas will not only be ideas that you can plan yourself, but are already planned. And you can find them as complete art lessons with all the lesson plans, assessments, rubrics, and handouts that you need to teach the lesson successfully. So these are fully art, fully planned art lessons that will allow you to plan quickly, encourage creativity, and teach successfully. So check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic. The link to my online store is in the description of this episode, but you can also find the direct links to my resources in my blog, MsArtastic.com, or simply search Ms. Artastic. You'll find everything on, everything on Google, of course. Anyway, so here are the four remaining pop art lesson ideas for kids that I have for you. So the first one is an Andy Warhol flowers art lesson. You can teach students about Andy Warhol flowers series. You can talk about how although the image was image is repeated it changes with each repetition you can have students divide the paper into four sections and then paint each section a different color after students can print a flower onto each of the quadrants with black paint have your students make cardboard cut out flowers um, and then they can paint the flower with black paint and press it onto each section to make a print in this art lesson students can practice the art of printmaking while exploring the style of andy warhol and his famous flowers artworks in this pop art movement inspired art lesson so mine is a red, lovely ready to use art lesson that teaches the style of printmaking and pop art to your primary students so for a fully prepped version of this art lesson that has a video art tutorial so that you can learn how to do it yourself through watching or you can just simply hit play in your classroom as it's i'm teaching it as though I'm teaching kids. (laughs) So with all the necessary handouts, lesson plan, and assessment, you can check out the resource in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic, or you can find it in the Artastic Collective in the Pop Art Bundle when it's released in the Artist and Art History section of your library. Don't forget that the membership opens every August. So check it out. Next is the Andy Warhol soup cans art lesson. So you can have students create their own versions of Andy Warhol's soup cans. Students can pick their favorite flavor Mm. (laughs) and sketch out the soup can. (laughs) Afterwards, (laughs) I almost said chicken noodle soup. (sighs) I meant students can outline the cans. (laughs) with a fine tip black marker and then paint it with acrylic or watercolor paints so my fully planned art lessons are or my fully planned version of this artwork allows middle school students to explore creating a watercolor painting version of this pop art style concept so it's kind of blending contemporary with his style so or his subject matter anyways so in this lesson students will use watercolor paints and black marker to create a watercolor painting inspired by andy warhol's famous soup can series and this is a great lesson for teaching watercolor painting techniques and the pop art movement find this complete art lesson in my tpt store air or in the pop art bundle upon its release with your artastic collective membership Next is Roy Lichtenstein pop art words. So pop art words that explore onomatopoeia um, and words such as pop art styled artworks are sure to engage your students. So um, you can explore Lichtenstein's word artworks with your students in your classroom and you could teach about his like biography. You could teach about some of his famous artworks that you can show your students. depends on the age right so um you can do that and then you can teach about the different color schemes he uses and the graphic arts style of his creating of his art and then kids can pick a word that expresses a sound and create mimicking the style of Liechtenstein. so in this art lesson students will use paint and marker to create a pop art lesson or artwork that is inspired by the famous artworks of Liechtenstein from the pop art movement so engage your students with the fun pop art artworks a wonderful art project that is ready to use Um, you can definitely find that in my art um, find this complete art lesson in my tpt store or in the pop art bundle upon its release with your artastic collective membership but otherwise, if you just want to go with your own thing, again, go get some inspiration. Kids can come up with a variety of words that 
um, mimic sounds and then you can totally create this yourself but if you want something that's already created you can just go ahead and find that in my TPT store and then just teach. Another artist to explore um, are the works of Keith, Keith Herring. So you can explore a variety of Herring artworks with your students and kids um, can discuss the different figures or elements he commonly features, features in his artworks. So kids can think, pair, share what they think his artwork means or what they might reflect and they can also make a chart and record common color combinations that Herring uses in his works. So students can create an artwork that combines the common figures that he uses in his artworks and in my art lesson students will use marker and paint to create a pop art inspired art artwork inspired by famous artist Keith Haring. Of course I have this as a ready to use art lesson and it's a lovely ready to use art lesson that is a wonderful way to explore the artist's style and art from the pop art movement and you can find my complete art lesson in my TPT store or again in the pop art bundle upon its release in their tactic artistic collective membership and of course it has a video art tutorial so you can definitely do it yourself or simply hit play in your classroom well those are my five pop art movement art lesson ideas that you can do with your students don't forget to head on over to artasticcollective.com and bookmark my site subscribe to the waitlist and download my free art lessons that are there so you can check out the quality of my art lessons before you decide to enroll or buy the singles in my tpt store ms artastic and don't forget, the pop art that you teach to your kids in your classroom should really be something that they can connect to. And it should not be imitating completely or using the same subject matter or subjects from the 1950s or 1960s or so on. It should be something that they connect to. So you should definitely allow kids to pick, to pick words or subject matter or advertisements of things or celebrities right of that they like that's something that is meaningful to them otherwise they're not going to be feeling connected or engaged so what i'm saying is it's getting farther and farther away from kids being able to relate to somebody like marilyn monroe so let them pick celebrities or advertisements or brands and logos of things that are from their time Right? It might not even be something that you know fully. And that's okay too. It should be something that they like. Because then they're going to be connected to it. And they're going to want to engage. And plus pop art is about pop culture. <laughs> and pop culture, like Brillo pads and soup cans, that's Andy Warhol's reflection, right? That's not your student's reflection or connection. That's not even mine anymore. They might want to do My Little Pony and that's okay. Or whatever whatever they want. I don't even know who's famous right now because <laughs> I don't keep up, but whatever, whoever is a famous person, let them go for it. As long as it's of course, like within appropriate boundaries of school. And again, depends on the age group. This is going to be a range of subject matters that are going to be interest, you know, kids are going to be interested in, it's, you know, high school, elementary, big difference. But what I'm saying is let them pick things that are current for them so they connect to it, but they should, they can do that through the lens and explore it through the lens and style of Liechtenstein or Herring or Warhol or whatever. Okay. So that's my little tidbit to you. And on that note, make sure you check on the, check out the artastic collective.com and I am Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic signing out.